This segment of Del Marva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. It's called the silent killer. Despite advancements in treatment, ovarian cancer remains a highly lethal disease. That's because by the time a woman develops symptoms, the cancer is already in the late stages. The numbers tell the story. The Centers for Disease Control reports that in 2009, more than 20,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Of those women, more than 14,000 of them died. But there's a blood tests and clinical trials that could change that and if the test shows promising results in a much larger group of women it could be a huge medical breakthrough in fighting this silent killer and here to tell us more is pam fleckenstein program director of the women's prevention and wellness center at peninsula regional medical center thanks for joining us this afternoon pam I'm, i want to start out right now how do we test for ovarian cancer is there a screening there is no definite screening for ovarian cancer Basically, you need to have your annual pelvic exam to determine whether or not there is a pelvic mass present, possibly a sonogram, which would pick up an ovarian mass, and then a CA-125 blood test. Right, now, this new study was conducted in 4,000 women over an 11-year period. Do you really think that a blood test may one day pick up an ovarian cancer? Oh, it definitely can pick up an ovarian cancer, but it also picks up other cancers. So it's not as specific a test as what they'd like to see right now. And you're talking about the CA-125? CA-125. CA uh -huh. stands for cancer antigen. And um, it, like you said, it, it, it measures higher levels of a protein, right? Exactly. And it, it mm -hmm. can be picked up if you have other Right. Mm -hmm. You can Other have conditions. benign conditions as well, pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, pregnancy, endometriosis, uterine fibroids, or something like pancreatitis can also send your CA-125 up, mm -hmm. make it elevated. So it's hard to specify ovarian cancer specifically from the test, but the test is a good marker for it. The higher the antigen, the more likely the ovarian cancer is there. So this probably would not become a typical screening for it's ovarian cancer? It's not a routine screening test. Um, occasionally I have women that absolutely insist on a CA-125 because they're very paranoid about ovarian cancer. And in that case, just for their mental health, yeah. we do a CA-125. Mm -hmm. Why is ovarian cancer so hard to diagnose? because it's usually pretty advanced before women start having any symptoms. There really are no symptoms with ovarian cancer initially. Later, there's pelvic pain, bloating, urinary frequency, and sometimes these symptoms are just very vague and the women don't even think to re report them to their clinician. And it actually shows up in two different ways? The sonogram and the CA-125 and then ultimately, you know, a laparoscopic biopsy or removal of the tumor. Right, which can be... a more definitive way of deciding what it is and staging it. And it can be on the inside of the ovary and the mm -hmm. outside, is that right? It, there are some rarer forms of cancer, the mucinous kind, that are internal, inside the ovary. The most common and lethal kind are the ones on the epithelium, the outside covering of the ovary. Are, more, are there some women who are more prone to get ovarian cancer than others? There are. There are some women that have strong family histories of ovarian cancer. Women that have had breast cancer or endometrial cancer are more at risk. Women that are nulliparous, that have not had children uh, or possibly only had one children, Pregnancy interrupts the cycling for nine months. Mm -hmm. And the more you can interrupt that cycle, the less at risk you are for ovarian cancer. And uh, birth control pills, contraceptive hormonal um, pills mm -hmm. can also so lessen your risk for ovarian cancer. So the more you ovulate, the more likely you are to get ovarian it's, cancer? It's the same thing as just any kind of little irritation makes you more likely for an epithelial type of cancer, similar to a, sun ca uh, a skin cancer. If you scratch it, pick it, dig at it, if there's mm -hmm. an area that's very irritated, then it's more likely to become a type of cancer. Same with the ovary. When you ovulate every single month, and women ovulate every month for a lot of years, you can irritate the surface of the ovary. Hmm. They used to think that something as simple as powder getting into the uterus, going through the fallopian tubes, and getting to the ovary could 
cause ovarian cancer. Really? I think they've ruled that out, but they're just saying anything irritating can cause ovarian cancer. Now, I know some people who get um, in vitro, mm -hmm. they develop more eggs. Are mm -hmm. they more at risk? They are hyperstimulating their ovaries by um, having injections that make them ovulate more, which that portion, I guess, you would think would make them more at risk. However, sometimes the reason they hyperstimulate the ovaries is because they're not ovulating. They are anovulatory, and this, if you are anovulatory, would make you less at risk for ovarian cancer. Now, we were talking before mm -hmm. the show, and you mentioned the appendix, mm -hmm. and getting your appendix out can actually help you. Help you? Yeah, they think that the origins of some ovarian cancer actually starts in the appendix. Really? With some aberrant cells. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything we can do to prevent ovarian cancer lifestyle? Anything we can do to lower our risk? I think you need to have your pelvic exam every year. Um, and any symptoms, no matter how vague they are, report them to your clinician. Let them know so that they can investigate farther. Otherwise, just healthy lifestyles, you know, good choices, good healthy diets, things like that can reduce your risk of almost any kind of cancer. All right, just one more time, just so mm -hmm. everybody knows, the symptoms that we're looking for are what? Would be things like abdominal bloating, pelvic pain, it can be generalized pain, it can be specific to one part or another of mm -hmm. the lower abdomen. Um, and frequent urination from a tumor that possibly puts pressure on the bladder. Hmm. And go get it checked out. Better get safe than out. sorry, right? Right, yeah. So no matter how inconsequential the symptoms seem, you should mention them to your provider. All right, Pam, as always, great information. Thank you for joining oh, us my pleasure. this afternoon. Thank you for having me. And if you would like mm -hmm. to learn more about the ovarian cancer study or PRMC, go to delmarvalife.com and click on the show tab. And while we're talking health, today's the day open enrollment at the Center of the National Affordable Care Act debuts. Up next, we'll find out what that means for you. Plus, how to avoid insurance fraud during the change. And later, whether you're in the blue collar industry looking to move to another field or you're just looking for a job, the answer you need to have ready before your prospective employer asks it. Delmarva Life will be right back.